Good morning, let's make some stuff on the CNC machine. So today we've got a program called VCarve. And this is our VCarve Pro version 12. So you should find this on the desktop computers. This is not on your computer, it's on the desktops. When we first open it up, it's gonna load. You're gonna hit this home screen right here. All right, so taking a look at the home screen, there's lots of, you know, your standard stuff, create a new one, open an existing one. You've got these tutorials here that just bring you to links elsewhere on the internet. You've got these online resources. The only thing we really care about is this create new file. So I'm gonna create a new file. The first thing I need to do is know how big my material is. So with the CNC, CNC stands for Computer Numeric Controlled, so numbers are important. It just follows numbers all around. Um, but the machine itself has no idea how big your material is, has no idea how big the stuff on the computer is. All these things are kind of separate. So we need to tell the computer, which is going to tell the machine, how big our stuff is. Right. So I'm giving you a board 10 inches by 10 inches by 3 quarters of an inch thick. Again, it's up to you. You can paint it if you want to. So this is an example if you paint it first, then carve it away. This is an example if you carve it away and then paint it. And this is an example if you don't paint it at all. Whichever one you want to do is entirely up to you. It is your project. But first, we need to know 10 inches by 10 inches by 0.75 or 3 quarters. If I tell you in class to use a different number, use a different number. For this video, we're doing 10, 10, 0.75. So, job type up here. So this job setup is where we get have to set up everything nicely first. So we are cutting on one side, so we're single sided. Our job size, this is where you can like type in numbers to change the size of whatever it is you're working with, but we're doing 10, 10, and thickness is 0.75. We're working in inches today, so make sure inches. My zero position. So again, I need to tell the machine everything ahead of time to set it all up so it all works correctly. So the zero position for the Z, Z means up and down. So I want that Z position to be on top of the board. So there's times where you'd want it down underneath at the bottom. We want it on the very top right here. So my zero, Z zero position is material surface. X, Y datum position. So this is like if I'm looking at my coordinate grid in math class. Let me pull up. All right. So you have your coordinate grid in math. All right. You got your X axis, your Y axis, your origin right here is zero, zero. We need to know where our board is in relation to zero, zero. So we could put it right here. We could put it over here, we could put it here, we could put it here. And there's a lot of times where you'd actually want it in the middle. But for this project, we're going to put it in the bottom left corner like this. Because the way the machine works, again, this all uses numbers. So what it does is it says, hey, I know 0, 0. Then I'm going to go to this point right here, this coordinate, and I'll do a line. Then I'll go down to this coordinate right here, and I'll do a line. Then. So what it does is it just follows coordinates in your coordinate system right here. All right. So we want our zero point to be in the bottom left corner. All right, so X, Y datum position, we want that in the bottom left. Modeling resolution is just how pretty it looks on the computer, doesn't change anything on the machine itself, and we'll hit OK. All right, so we should have a 10 inch, and you can see the little guide bar up here, 10 by 10, it should be zero, zero is down here in the bottom left. All right. Coming over here, we've got all of our tools here on the left-hand side, create vectors. So remember, we want vectors. We want lines that our machine can follow. So we call those vectors in math and in computer graphics. All right. um, standard, you know, how to make a shape, add some text, transform, edit objects, 3D stuff. Getting into the 3D view up here, so these two tabs at the top that say 2D view and 3D view, you're going to go back and forth between those a lot, because the 3D view is where you will see how it's going to look, 2D view is going to go back to editing it. All right. 
over here on the far right side, this little hidden thing says toolpaths. Toolpaths are very, very, very important in CNC. It tells you how to actually cut out whatever it is you're doing right here. Uh, little tip right away, if you're doing stuff over here, and if I click away, you see how this window right here disappears. It gets really annoying because you're using it and it disappears. So right here at the very top right, there's this little pin that says auto hide. If you click on that pin, it'll pin that window in place so it stops disappearing. All right. Um, quick little demo right here. All right. So this I've just got seven identical circles. All right. I just used copy and paste, but I just want to show you that different tool paths can do different things. Um, so a profile tool path, what that does is that follows your line. Now you may want to follow exactly on that line. You may want to follow, so this one would go exactly on that line. You may want to go on the outside of a line or on the inside of a line. So this one's cutting inside that line. This one's cutting outside that line. This one's cutting on the line but going all the way through. And I'll show you all this. A pocket, what that'll do is that'll clear out everything on the inside. Uh, V-carve kind of uses a different bit and makes it like a V shape. That's the one we're going to use actually. Um, so there's lots of different things you can do. And if I hit preview, I'm going to preview everything. So you can see I've taken one identical circle and depending on how I cut it out, you get different results. So that's why tool paths are important right here. For this project, we're going to use the V carve tool path to make our plaque here. All right. So uh, so let's go back to my 2D view. Actually, let's just go back to this one right here. All right, here we go. All right, so making a shape pretty straightforward. Um, you know, you can click, draw something. You've got apply and close. So once you draw it, you can just hit close. Or if I wanted, let's say, a rectangle that was exactly four inches by three inches, right? I can hit that and I can hit apply and it will, oh, I'm sorry, down here, four inches by three inches. Hit apply, and that'll make that one right there. So you can do it with numbers, or you can just draw it on the computer. All right. Polygons, you can change the number of sides, and then draw. Same with stars, you can change the number of points of the stars, you can change different things on it. All right. All those shapes are good. The text tool. All right, so I'm going to hit text. I'm going to say engineering. All right, now I hit close. Now that's too big. It's going to go over the edges. So most things, if you just click on it or double click on it, you've got your standard resizing little dots in here to rotate. You grab one of these little dots in the corner and you get that little rotate. So I can rotate it however I want to. As always, control Z is undo. All right. And let's say I realized I made a mistake. I want to change my text. I want to change the font or something. If I double click it, oh, they changed it. Ah, oh, they changed it. All right. And if I hit the text button again, there we go. Um, so now I can go in and I can change my font, whatever I need to do. Right. Doo, doo, doo. For this assignment, you want to use the true type font. You don't want to use single line for this particular assignment. What single line does is it um, the machine will follow a specific line. For this one, we actually need the shape with how we're cutting it out. All right. So I'm going to hit close. All right. Let's say I wanted to put it on a curve. So there's a button here that says text on a curve, wrap text along a curve. First thing I need is a curve to do that with. So I'm going to use this arc tool. And I'm going to just make a little curve right here. And now let's say click on this text on a curve button. Now the computer will tell you what it wants you to do. So, for example, select a single line of text in the curve to wrap it onto. 
why isn't it working? Because I didn't select a single line of text and a curve to wrap it onto. So I'm going to select my text right here. When you're selecting something, you may have to actually click on the line itself, not the space in between, but on the actual line. So when I click on that, you know it's selected because it will turn pink when it is selected. All right, so I've selected my text. Now I need to select my curve. Hold Shift to select multiple things. And you see now it took that text, put it on the curve here. And I've got different options you can play around with that do different things. All right, All right I'm going to hit close. Cool. All right, that looks good. Now, I know the thing that you all want to add are the pretty pictures that you get off the internet to make fun stuff. So let's do that part right there. All right. 